Well, well, if it isn't the Matt Adams. Matt Adams, welcome to my show. Uh, thanks, Andrew. So uh, for my audience, Matt Adams is somebody I've known for years. I consider him a friend, not just to me, but he's a friend to so many, so, so many people in the, the, the business community here. Um, and he is because he, yes, folks, he has that quality that you know that I always talk about on my show. Yes, this is a man loaded, okay? He never goes below a half a tank. Ever. Right. He's always full tank, give a shit. And um, it just oozes in, just when you talk to the guy, you know. And um, he has a stellar reputation in town, um, not just because of the service you get, but because how he delivers the service, because he really does care. Um, Matt is the president and owner of Factor One Studios, which is um, not your ordinary web development firm. I know he would describe it differently. Um, it, you know, it, he designs sites, his company designs sites for people with the intention to use the site to make them money not to build a static site. If somebody's just looking to build a postcard, um, he's not your guy. If somebody's looking to build a business, he's your guy. So, and build a business through their site. And it's a guy who's built businesses, has a business mindset, actually even has um, not just a technology mind, but even a biz ops mind. Um, so sorry for the long introduction, Matt, but again, welcome to my show. Um, I am really glad you're here because to me, you really exemplify the gas, even so much so that you have that phrase on your website, um, on the Factor One Studios website. <laughs> There's a, am I correct about that? Yeah, no, it's there. Um, giving a shit since 2004. <laughs> I love it. And, and by the way, I got to take some credit here, folks. That he heard it from me and he loved it so much, he put it on his site. But he like knew it was Four true. or five years ago, probably? Yeah. No, but he knew, he knew it was true. I've been using this phrase for years. So let me ask you a question. And I ask everybody yeah. this question, okay? And where do you think, Matt, this level of give a shit comes from? Where, where did you get it? Um, growing up, we spent a lot of time just helping others. Um, everything we did as a family is that way. So some of it's probably maybe some teasing built into me that, you know, I'm recovering from. If that's all right with everybody. Um, <laughs> oh, there's my dog. This is a yeah, live show. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's a recorded show, but you know, it's not an edited there. show. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no, I think it was just some of that ingrained in me as a child was just helping others and putting others first. And so I think it's really built into my, um, my, my core personality. I've done all those personality tests, all those surveys, all those assessments. And I'm always like really high on nurturing, really high on communication. Uh, and so that really drives a lot of the things I do. And so it doesn't matter that I'm designing a, you know, a logo or a website, uh, you know, developing some backend code for some function or just helping a customer figure out something that has nothing to do with me. Like it's hitting my communicator and nurturer skills and just, stuff has been built into me since day one. Okay, so That's you just of... answered it. And I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, you answered it the way most people, not everyone, but most people that have massive gas, who I consider gas guzzlers, mm -hmm. answer it. And what you said was it was instilled in you as a child. I don't know if it comes from parents though. So it's interesting, maybe it does. My, one of my sons, I have twin sons that are 11. Um, Anytime you see somebody upset, hurting, whether it's physical or emotional, like a trigger clicks in him and he is on it. He is like, what do you need? Do you need a bandaid? Let me help you. And he's been that way since like two. Yeah, um, absolutely. Not everybody answers it in the same way. But what I'm, and, and there are certain people that have a greater uh, tendency to be sensitive and more em empathetic. Mm -hmm. And there are those that are not empathetic at all. Yeah. Right. And some of that is kind of 
our natural disposition, shall we say. But what I heard from you was, and, and maybe I misunderstood, and I could have, was that you, I guess you recognized it within yourself from an early age rather than it being instilled in you from an early age. I mean, my parents both made sure they took care of others as well. So it's not completely lost. I just think like, growing up, like I look back to like my little sister, she's not quite the same as Nate because we're just different people. Uh, so I think some of it comes down to like, you know, just core birth personality and same with my sons, same house, same age, a little different in that space. One's highly attuned to the needs of others and the other, you know, has his own little agenda sometimes. And so that's just 11 year old boys you see it in. So I think some of it is, it's a combination of environmental factors as well as the way you were just. Well, you know, so I know a lot of people in Phoenix, Arizona, which is where we both are. I know a lot of people who've done business with you Mm -hmm. uh, and they talk, right? And the feedback I usually get, not only is that you delivered on your promise, but it was how you delivered on your promise yeah. in that you, you made the experience, uh, you know, just enjoyable, you know, that they, they actually fell in love with you. They wanted to be your friend, not just pay you money. I'm telling you what the feedback I get. Right. Nice. And, and to me, that is the gas. That, that's what it is. Right. So, so you have this quality. Do you, think that that has helped grow your business is that how you get a lot of your referrals you think or you know how how would you sum up why factor one has grown the way it has so we've grown word of mouth every year for 15 years Uh, and so it's absolutely that it's absolutely the way we do things Uh, it's how we hire it's how we fire it's how we hold each other accountable is that give a shit Uh, it's the only metric I have that's between all departments. I don't care if you're a designer, developer, project manager, um, you know, giving a shit is a core value of ours so that it can be, you know, like, are you giving a shit? And same with our other projects, um, our other key metric is like, we deliver everything to be worry-free. And so is it a worry, is it worry-free design, worry-free code, worry-free project? So everything we do is in line with those kind of like values that are universal to every department, every skill set. Uh, and we look for that when we're hiring, and so that's really important. We also look for good communication when we're hiring because our customers come to us not knowing anything about the space most often. They don't know the ins and outs and the technical aspects of the website. So they need someone to be their partner. And then I've learned over the last couple of years, really, I mean, the first five or 10 years, I was definitely young, new to all this, uh, an order taker. People would ask for something, I would produce it. I didn't always agree. Um, and at that time, I was growing through my own leadership. I was growing through my own business pains. I mean, I went through a recession, which was super fun. So I learned a lot about that. I learned a lot about like just better business management. So I was reading as many books as I possibly could, going to as many workshops and getting out of my bubbles, getting out of the graphic design, web design, development bubble. Uh, and so I started learning more about just everything possible within business, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the personal MBA, but I went through a lot of those books as well. Uh, so I went through the personal MBA series. So I read finance books, marketing books, logistics books. I was reading all of them. I used to only read things that I thought mattered to me, which was like design and development and marketing. Uh, so in that process, I learned a ton more about just general business acumen. And so- and By the I way, was- it shows. It shows in your in how you do business with people because you actually- And you said something and I interrupted you, but it's worth it because I I took a few notes. But one of the things you said is that you did, you did what they asked you, but you didn't always agree. And now you are almost like a business advisor, even though it's through web, you're building a website. My experience with you is that you're actually like a business advisor to them through web. Right. And that's, that's one of the biggest shifts we've made in the last probably six months, maybe a little little longer, maybe 12 we've actually decided to stop trying to sell websites and start selling strategic partnerships because people would buy the website and get so much more. Uh, you know, one of my case studies on this is a couple of years ago in art school was losing customers left and right. They had an online school, a couple thousand members, but they were just, they thought they'd hit their plateau. Like this is the max number of people. Anybody who knew comes on leaves. Turns out, you know, and they, they did some basic 
reconnaissance of saying, hey, why did you quit? And people are like, oh, it's just too expensive. And they just would stop. And I'm like, well, let's dig deeper. Let's ask them 20 questions. Why? And what did you like? What did you not like? And so I started digging a lot deeper with their customers, all to figure out where the website needed to be redesigned, thinking it was a design problem. Uh, and in that, that that's called heuristic research. And so in that heuristic research, we figured out that, um, yeah, there were some design changes here and there. Things were hard to find, hard to see, hard to save. Um, so there were some logistical things that had to be fixed. But what we actually uncovered is that students were quitting the program because it was too expensive, because what they were getting out of it wasn't worth what they were paying. It's a $500 a month program that had 700 lessons in it across like 60 courses. Um, they didn't need all that. Some, most people who were quitting only came for one or two things. They came for comic book inking or illustration or uh, you know, master level oil painting. Like they came for certain things, but they only sold in a master level program because that's what they were known for. In a brick and mortar school, they sold a master level program. And then and they moved it online and just kept it the same, but the users had changed. So once we started digging in, we found out that people only wanted one or two things, therefore it was too expensive. $500 is too expensive when you only want one or two pieces of that. If, you wouldn't order eight pizza, eight, eight different pizzas just to get the two slices. You would just go buy the slice. So that's what we did. We actually changed their product because their videos already existed. The courses already existed. I had to change some technical aspects of it, but I kind of came back to the client. like, what if for a trial, we just sold two or three of these? Like I've got 10 people that are interested in comic book inking. What if we carved off comic book inking, these two courses as their own, and we'll call it 50 bucks. Uh, 50 bucks a month, you get these things. All 10 people bought it and stayed on for a long time. They actually stayed on for three months. So, you know, they made $150 instead of zero. Uh, people were happy. And now we actually, so we, we actually changed it. So almost their entire course catalog is all available a la carte. So there's $500 master program. And then there's like 40 other SKUs oh, well, of different <laughs> products. And we doubled the revenue. So here, so, so two good revenue. things, two good things happened. A, you completely changed their business and doubled their revenue. And B, they needed you even more because you had to build out all those separate courses. So, I mean, but that's a course that, already existed. I, I understand, but you had to build it out technologically. Yeah. So, but I mean, the beautiful thing was you were representing them in their best interest. So, that's um, exactly it. That's our primary then, goal is we ask all of our customers early on, like, what's your, um, I think it's called the Dan Sullivan question. Have you read that book? No. Which okay, one? so there's, there's this, it's called the Dan Sullivan question. And the whole concept is we're meeting here. Uh, it's April 7th, 2023, and you have hit all of your goals. Working backwards, what has had to happen along those ways, along the way there? And what, what did we hit and what did we miss? Uh, what changed? Who entered your life? Who left your life? What clients entered? What clients left? Did you get that new office? Like, let's, let's, basically rewind the tape and look at the highlight reel. Uh, and then how do we make sure we're a part of that? And so I actually asked myself internally, I'm not full of it and know that I can't be the whole reason why someone's world has changed in three years. <laughs> but I can say like, how can, how can I, and how can factor one be a small part of that? How can we be a catalyst to a few of those things? Uh, and so we'll ask our clients those questions. We'll have that hard conversation. And I want them to get deep on it. I want to know like personal, professional, everything. Let's talk about all of it. Uh, and stuff changes, life happens. You know, you may think you want something and three years later you change your mind. But we basically kind of eventually distill it all down to what we call our North Star. And so we ask our client, like, this is our primary goal. If we can hit this North Star, that means we had a successful project, a successful engagement, whatever we were working on was a success because we hit that North Star. Doesn't matter how we get there, but we have to get there. Uh, and that helps us with all of our conversations moving forward, every single thing we're working on is a matter of what helps us get to our North Star and what's a distraction. You know, that's very similar to, did you ever play the Fresh Biz game? No, or, I didn't, but I heard about it. Okay, so basically what you try to figure out at the end of the game is how, how do you get to your island and what do you want and need on your island, right? Okay. So it's very similar. Um, so you basically evolved from being, I mean, let's go way back 15 years ago. You need a website, I build your website. Yes, you want that. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. To you literally, you take everything apart to completely understand what, why, how, who is it for, 
Why is it for them? I mean, you literally take apart every piece to make sure that you're actually doing the right thing for them. And you'll tell them that, you know what? I know you need this site, but it may, I don't think it's, it will work for you in terms of conversion. Here's why. Yeah, we um, care about customer and, service. We care about from the very moment a person first learns that company, all the way through pre-sale, sale, delivery, and then post-management, like what happens after all of this? Uh, and so I care about the entire spectrum of all that. And so we actually changed the way we write proposals. We used to write a scope of work that was very detailed. We would try and cover every single piece of the technology deliverable um, because that was what we were holding ourselves accountable to. Uh, even internally, we have a, a QA process where we're testing the site. Everyone does, you know, a lot of people do site QA of does it load? Is there anything broken? We would do uh, developer to design QA and then we would actually do project manager QA. Did the thing we built match the scope of work? Did we, did we miss anything on the proposal on the contract because we can't deliver something that we've missed? Uh, so anyway, we were really good about that for a long time. Uh, but we actually changed because we realized we can't know everything at the outset. I don't know what's wrong sometimes until we're halfway in. So we actually started just writing um, basically job descriptions. And so, hey, we're gonna come in and for this much money per month, we're responsible for X, Y, and Z. We will produce A, B, and C. Uh, we cannot do these things, but we will oversee these things. And so we'll actually create a, an entire department job description from so a chief strategy officer below. So I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my question. So in essence, what your firm, what Factor One also does is, is it's not just a web development firm. You are an outsourced department for companies that need somebody to manage the whole online situation from a business perspective, not just from a technology perspective. Exactly. Exactly. So you have clients that will literally outsource that work to you instead of hiring people in house to manage their site. And usually what they wind up doing, and I know this, I know this is they'll hire somebody at a low rate who's a web developer, a, a, a kid, no offense to kids, technology kid, but the, it's what they don't know about what they don't, they don't know what's good for the business. They don't know how to examine it. You basically gave yourself an MBA. You evolved yourself and this company to this point. And I have to say it all happened because you gave a shit so much <laughs> you, because you, you didn't want just to give them, here's your, here's what you bought that, will be $25,000, have a nice day. You were interested in, okay, did it work for you? Could it work better for you if I had done this? You know, exactly. did I actually, should have, should have I even built what I built you, right? And, and that's what you asked yourself internally. Oh, and yeah. you grew yeah. from it. We've seen award-winning sites do nothing for the business. Just nothing. It's a beautiful site that has literally won awards and it didn't actually make any dent in the business. Uh, and that's the thing I started to realize is that pretty sites and beautiful sites don't change businesses uh, functionally for very long, if at all. And so we still want a great looking site, but we really wanted to make sure that it hits other things first. We wanna make sure that it's working and actually hitting business objectives long before it's you know concerned about how, how pretty is it. So, um... Do you, have you represented other uh, universities, online schools? So yeah, we have a number of clients in the online education space. Uh, I have clients that have done golf before. We've had like a 90 day golf program. Uh, we have art schools. I have a, a woman right now we're working with wrapping up. Uh, they teach interior design business management to interior designers. So interior designers have a degree. They have no idea how they're working, uh, how to run their business. And so they're teaching them all those aspects. And so that's one aspect of our work. We have other clients that have other online marketplaces. Uh, I work on, as a fractional uh, chief strategy officer for Oxana, which is a, uh, you know, John Dahl. Um, yes. So very much John Dahl's involved with that as well. And that is a- John's uh, been on my show. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, and that is a, a marketplace for fractional and flat fee general counsel. Uh, so there's, there's web design in that space, but there's, there's market position and strategy in there. Uh, 
we're working on applications now. I'm able, as a as our new position of our company, I'm able to help work with outside application developers creating product that I can't normally produce that normally wouldn't people wouldn't hire us for because they only see us in this one bucket. But over here, now that we're managing strategy and managing the technology, I don't have to be the one to produce it because my job responsibility is to manage it. It doesn't matter who produces it. You know, and I, and I just don't think people, when they hear the, the name Factor One Studios, their brain would automatically go there. <laughs> yeah, I think you, uh, we got to work on our own strategy a little bit. Uh, <laughs> You know, because it's not a studio. It's it is a full. It's a studio and a full blown consulting operation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna watch it because I don't love the term consultant because usually people have this negative connotation of consultants or. I'm a uh, consultant. Is that I'll, a negative? I'll talk, no, I'll talk <laughs> and shit. No do. Um, and I, that's one of the things we talk. Like, no, no, we're gonna do the shit. We're gonna talk about it, but we can also produce it for the most part. So you, and it, it's we'll, true. We will produce it. So. Um, so opportunities for you are uh, clearly companies that want to grow their business through web and they need somebody with a web mind, but also with a business mind um, yes. and can help them or outs or they have already that function to some degree and they want, instead of hiring people in house to constantly be managing the site and the business aspect through the site they can outsource that function so um last question um is there something in the next two to five years a new direction a new space or a space you want to focus on more exclusively moving forward assuming the world uh, goes back to normal which it will right. at some point uh, no, actually, I'm pretty happy with where we've been moving. And so most of our clients are reoccurring revenue, um, which allowed us to be reoccurring revenue at a much higher level than we used to be. Um, so we're just looking for like those growth stage companies to work with that are doing new innovative things and they need someone to help lead all of that. Uh, so no, I, I don't really have a great answer to that question because I'm actually really No, that was, the, that. that's a great answer because really what I was trying to pull out of you was, um, if somebody wanted to help you or somebody wanted to get involved, oh, for sure. you know, sure. you brought up how, and that's really what I wanted. So, so how do they get in touch with you, Matt? Uh, factor one studios.com is probably the easiest way. It's our website. Um, I believe on LinkedIn, I'm just Matt Adams. Uh, but if you throw Matt Adams factor one in the search, you'll, I'll prop, I'll pop. And by the way, up. factor one is number one, not it is open. number one. Yes. So it's factor numeral one. Correct studios.com yes um so and uh um a factor one can't be divided by anything because we're better together so say that again nerdy. say it again so, so a, a mathematical factor of something is, is evenly divisible and since one is not evenly divisible uh, as, as a company of factor one we're not easily divisible we are better together as a whole oh that's that. awesome i don't know if you ever explained that to me yeah okay yeah, from, so, so that's the premise of the name. I got it. Yep. So Matt I've Adams. Always been a we, uh, always a team, always a group. There's never been an I in this situation. Well, and that's because my, my friend, because you give a shit so much, it's on your website, find it on his site, giving a shit for 15 years. I love it. I absolutely love it. Give a shit matters, folks. It does. And what also matters to me and how I live my life is I always say, that it's good business to make a difference in the lives of those we do business with and seek business from. And this guy does it every day. Matt Adams, total pleasure. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being you. And uh, you know, always, 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 I will do my best to help you, sir. Um, all the best to you through these strange and unusual and challenging times. Um, I know that there are people that are getting clients now and there's no reason why you can't and anybody else can't. So anybody listening to this show and you need some help making more money on your website or your web presence, you need to give this man a call. Matt Adams, thanks so much again. Thank you so much, Andrew. Take care.